More than 90% of Kentucky's power comes from coal. With federally mandated CO2 limits on the horizon, work underway at the University of Kentucky Center for Applied Energy Research is more critical than ever. CAER is developing green technology to capture CO2 emissions from coal-fired power plants. The industry will adapt technology which right now doesn't exist. So that's our challenge. Realistically, what type of technologies can we be working on in order to help the industry have something to adapt in the future? One of CAER's technologies uses chemical solvents to capture the CO2 from emissions. Another technology isolates CO2 by combusting the fuel with only oxygen. Once we've captured CO2, we have to do something with it. Uh, right now, the only feasible option is to pump it underground into geologic formations, of which we in Kentucky do have some. But if you look at other major coal areas, they don't have geologic formations. It's not an option for them. Four years ago, CAER and UK's Biosystems and Ag Engineering Department set out to prove that an algae-based system could recycle the CO2 in flue gas. With $1.8 million in funding from the Kentucky Energy and Environment Cabinet, CAER is now partnering with Duke Energy to test a pilot-scale algae system at East Bend Station. The nice thing about the algae is that it does actually capture and sequester the CO2. The heart of our process is the photobioreactor and it's a fancy word for a place to grow algae. And if you look at the words and break it down, you've got bioreactor, which means you're using a living organism to do a job for you. You've got photo, meaning light. We're harnessing algae's ability to grow very fast and perform photosynthesis in order to take the carbon dioxide in flue gas and turn it into biomass. Instead of acres of ponds, CAER's strategy is based on a closed system of photobioreactors to grow algae. We have the ability to eliminate evaporation because we have an enclosed system. We have a way to minimize contamination because we don't have ducts landing in our tubes. But having a closed system, I think it is actually offers a number of advantages, particularly from a weather point of view. Even in the cold of winter, even in the limited sunshine that we had, the algae did grow. The algae that we're using is a native species. It's here for a reason. It likes this environment. The challenge for us has been to develop a photobioreactor that would be expandable and that would scale up in a cost-effective manner. So the target price was a dollar per liter of photosynthetic volume, and that's where we are. CAER system, made of plastic mailing tubes and off-the-shelf PVC pipes, is built by UK students and glued together on site. Expanding the system simply means adding more tubes. I think they might be too close together at this point. Uh, where these are getting shaded by the rest. So looking at tube spacing and making the most efficient use of capital will be another major effort as we move forward. We're located on the east side of the power plant with southern exposure to maximize the sunlight. We have installed a 5,000 gallon feed tank with two centrifugal pumps. And that main tank serves as the hub. That's where we add our CO2, that's where we add our nutrients, and that's where we return our water. Algae comes out of the photobioreactors and it goes into the harvest tank. In a few hours, thanks to flocculation that helps the algae stick together, it settles to the bottom of the tank. It's a very dark green, the consistency of pesto. That material is what we would feed to an anaerobic digester. The anaerobic digester can turn the algae into methane that the power plant could burn for fuel. Or, using gravity filtration, wet lipid extraction and upgrading, you can make renewable diesel and jet fuel. Or by removing more moisture with a solar dryer and dry lipid extraction, you can make jet fuel or produce fish food and animal feed. You have to do work in the realm of feasible economics. From a biofuels processing point of view, it makes sense. It is not extremely profitable, but when you look at what's happened, you've actually captured CO2 from a dilute stream and turned it into a value-added product. We certainly have the ability to develop the technology to do this, and I think we're well on our way right now. We will bring back very large volumes of dewatered algae so that we can keep the chemists supplied for years. They can't do what they want to do unless they have a large quantity of algae, and that's something that we have the ability to produce at East Bend. We're actually doing this. We've seeded a reactor, we've grown algae off flue gas, and we're looking at expanding the facility and really proving the kinetics and the economics of it. And it's all in mind with what happens next, where do we take this next?